Our next guest to weigh in on the Big 12 and what's going on there. His name's Jimmy Birch. He's a sports columnist for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. He's on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Jimmy, thanks for joining us today. Uh, glad to be here. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. It's an interesting time for those in Big 12 country and those in Big 12 expansion country, if you will. Uh, BYU fans uh, waiting for what they hope will be an invite uh, to the Big 12. You wrote an article that interested Cougar fans. Uh, here are six essential sure. elements for Big 12 expansion. You said BYU needs to be included. Why'd you, why'd you say that? Well, I think they bring more to the table than uh, anybody else who you who we could characterize as a free agent at this point that, uh, you know, would be able to join quickly without, you know, messing with a grant of rights agreement from an existing uh, Power Five league. I, I mean, I think they bring, you know, across the board, you have the strongest across the board uh, sports programs, I think, you know, led by football. And, you know, Brigham Young is the – you know, obvious preferred, uh, you know, school in the state of Utah from, has the biggest fan base. You got uh, the biggest uh, national brand of, any, of anybody they could add. I mean, it adds up. It makes a lot of dollars and cents, S-E-N-S-E, in my mind. Uh, it's, but I don't vote. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you said BYU must be included in Big 12 expansion. Yeah, we happen I to agree. So. There are a lot of people I'm that sure agree. You do. So, <laughs> with that, yeah. with that being said, is there any scenario that you could see playing out where the Big Twelve announces expansion teams and BYU isn't one of them? Oh, sure, it's happened before. I mean, uh, Brigham Young has gotten to the threshold before and been left out. The unwillingness to play Sunday games, um, you know. I don't. You guys know a lot more about Brigham Young honor code issues than I do. Uh, just be aware of everything that just happened with Baylor in a private school and Title IX stuff. And uh, they're going to look really hard at any new members to make sure that they don't leave things flapping on the Title IX front. I can't speak to that for Brigham Young. But uh, they're going to look at that really hard because Baylor has – you know, quite honestly, embarrassed them twice now. You know, basketball 10 years ago and football right now. And uh, there's that. So. Well, let me let me follow up that question then. While there, there obviously are scenarios that could play out where that happens, how likely do you believe that is to happen? I think business trumps everything else with these guys. Every, you know, I've covered the Big 12 going back to, you know, the Southwest Conference Big 12, Big 10, Big 8 merger in the days before they, you know, leading into that. Um, every move that uh, either one of these groups have made has always been about getting more money They uh, and finding ways to create more money, which is something they can do by expanding right now and getting more money for the new teams from the television networks. And, uh, well, and you know, in addition to $25 million or so per team, if, if they expand, well, who, who brings additional uh, cachet and revenue to the table? And nobody, in my mind, brings more than uh, Brigham Young. With You know, they sell out football. They'll do, you know, a lot of bat, you know, do big numbers in basketball, and they're going to be competitive, and gosh, they're the only one out there that has a football national championship trophy to talk about among the uh, people you could easily uh, add to this mix by 2017. Jimmy Birch, columnist for the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, is on BYU Sports Nation. There's some interesting scenarios at play kind of out there being discussed that could or could not happen. Uh, you have the expansion of two to four. If, if it's just two, maybe uh, the idea is out there that maybe you wait a right. few years and try and get two Power Five teams once Grant of Rights are up in, in some conferences. Like Arizona, Arizona State was a shot in the dark out there. What do you think of that idea of add two, uh, like a BYU and a Houston or Cincinnati or whoever, and then you wait and see if you can't poach Power Fives? Well, I think that's a big, big dice roll if they wait on that. Um, th that's still out there. I mean, UCLA is uh, – uh, Rick Neuheisel dropped their name on a serious uh, XM broadcast a while back. I, I find that highly unlikely. 
I find that really too far down the line to do you a heck of a lot of good, but nothing would surprise me with these guys. I think they're <laughs> they they've had to drag Texas, you know, drag, you know, screaming, kicking and screaming to the idea of expansion, and I feel strongly that uh Texas support of the University of Houston, uh, extreme public support in that area, will get Houston into the league, and it's just a matter of, okay, how do you, what trade-off do you get? If Texas wants to stop at 12, does the league stop at 12? I, um, again, these guys have always been about chasing more money. You know, it's no secret that there's no guarantee that the Big 12 will even exist anywhere after the end of this TV contract in 2024-25. I mean, I, I, I'm more in the mindset that this is, you know, a potential money grab to get all the money you can while you can. And if it they do manage to extend the league beyond that, that's fantastic. And if the and in the interim, uh, in the eight to nine years, well, the more money you can get, the better. And that means four teams, and that's where I think they're going, personally. Yeah, I wanted to go more along those uh, that idea as well to where uh, Texas and Oklahoma could just break this up if they bounce at any point, right? And will uh, sure. if they had four, if the Big 12 adds four and the conferences are obligated, the pro-rated contract, to supply the 25 to $30 million per team if it's two to four, do they, do they blow Correct. up their goodwill uh, in an era where uh, these TV contracts, they're trying to downsize? The NBA is losing money. Uh, with its contract sure. from ESPN. What do you think? Well, I think totally that would blow up their goodwill with uh, the networks. I mean, I wrote that last week. I mean, that to uh, some degree. That's sure. That, you know, the people forget that, uh, you know, when the Big 12 downsized to 10, it was the TV partners that decided to continue paying them as if they were a 12-member league, and they didn't exercise the other side of that equation in their contracts and continued to uh, pay them at the same level as they paid them when they were 12 member league. And well, now that we get to the net to, to go the other way and say, well, we've agreed. I mean, it's business. I get it. It's perfectly legal. It's, but I mean, if the big 12 goes to four, I mean, it, I think it signals that, they don't they don't know how much longer the league will you know remain in its current form and if texas and oklahoma want to jump off the train at the end of 2024 25 you've stitched together 12 other schools that hopefully can stay together and you know maybe they maybe they will maybe they won't but uh that's a reality out there there's no question about that there's no guarantee of Texas and Oklahoma extending their grant of rights that expire with these current TV contracts. All right, Jim, it's the million, well, it's probably the couple hundred million dollar question here. When do you expect an announcement from the Big 12? And once that announcement is made, who do you expect them to invite? Well, I still think it will be uh, Brigham Young, Houston, Cincinnati, and, and one other. Uh, whether that's Memphis, whether that's UConn, I don't. You can argue that one back and forth a lot of different ways. Uh, you know, one of Central Florida, you know, could possibly be that team. I, I don't have the greatest vibe on who the fourth school would be, but I do expect it to be a fourth school. I think they'd like to get this done in September. I, I think they'd like to get it announced get people and over with before they start playing the brunt of their conference games because I think they would prefer that it not overshadow their upcoming football season. I mean, this is, you know, this is going to be a um, a feel-good thing from their perspective. Hey, we're stabilizing, we're adding four teams. You know, let's get some positive strokes from that early on and, these people will join us in 2017. Wahoo, drop the confetti. Uh, now let's start playing the games that matter and see who wins this year. So that, <laughs> September seems good to me. The next uh, the next meeting of the presidents isn't scheduled, the face-to-face session, until October. But they could easily do this on uh, a 
conference call anytime. I mean, they could be meeting right now if they choose to be. I mean, they've uh, this has been talked about for quite some time. Every all ten of the presidents who would uh, do the voting are quite well versed on the candidates at this point. And we will keep talking about it uh, here among the BYU fans, Jimmy. We appreciate the time. We'll uh, keep reading those articles. And any anytime, guys. Uh, you, Take care. Looking forward to a good football season this year. Absolutely. Jimmy Birch on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Deseret First, your values, your timeline, your financial future.